This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. And I'm proud to announce my fifth book will be out mid-November 2022. So I'm often asked, um, how do I decide where to fish on the beach in, in terms of structure and stuff? So, hey, that's what I'm going to cover this video, and um, I'm going to do it using this drone. And so, yeah, it, it's, a, it's new for me, and <laughs> you're going to see I'm even thinking about it a little bit as I unfold it, because it's actually only the second time that I've flown it. Um, first time was just in the backyard, up a couple of feet in the air, just to make sure I could, uh, you know, get the basics and uh, record video with it. But hey, what I like is a bunch of things. It's um, it's small, it's portable. It turns out to be stupidly easy to use. It's a Ruko F11 GIM2, and you know what? There's plenty of good videos online that will just you know go through all the little parts and details of it. I want to apply this to solving the issue of finding good uh, beach structure. And um, so that's what I'm going to do. But I'll also, as I'm going along, I will mention the things that I like about it. And as with any drone, make sure you register it and you get the appropriate license, check on local rules, and all of that's done here. I'll also mix some fishing to this video. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. You know, the challenge is it can be miles and miles of beach and good-looking structure, yet the reality is there are small spots within this that hold fish. Now, here's the kind of thing that I look for. You've got a lot of rocks, a lot of structure there, but then look at this as we're moving here. It transitions into a clean bottom. I'm a big fan of these transition points, edges, stuff like that. It tends to concentrate fish. You can imagine fish such as stripers, even blackfish, moving along an area like this. There's no rocks. There's no really good structure. And then what's going to happen when they reach some place that does? That's where they might concentrate. And that's the kind of thing I look for. And primarily, uh, I'm thinking about striped bass structure in, in this. But, you know, many other species play into this as well. And certainly, blackfishing gets into this. Uh, all right, so here we go. We're coming up um, on this other transition. I'm going to stop it right here. And yeah, look at that. I mean, that's the kind of thing that, that you know, I'm really, I, I would fish that for stripers. And I haven't fished this stretch um, really hardly at all, you know, a few casts here and there. But I've not fished this, which is part of the reason I chose it. It was because I don't know it. And this is going to give me a, just a gorgeous view of it and uh, will give me some ideas on how to fish it. So yeah, I'm going along here. You know, this is this all looks good. A lot of times it's a lot easier when you've got the oasis in the desert. You know, you've got some rocks out in the middle of an area where there's nothing else, but that's not the case here. It's kind of the opposite. Um, there's structure all over the place. So, um, you know, what would I focus on here? Um, yeah, well, we're going to get to that. So this drone has a range of three kilometers, which is 1.9 miles, which actually is way farther than uh, I'm going to ever attempt to fly it because legally, you know, you have, you've got to be able to keep the drone within sight. And, uh, yeah, boy, I can't see 1.9 miles away. But the nice thing is to know that, yeah, it won't lose contact with you if you're, let's say, uh, 1,000 meters away or something. Hey, another transition point there. But um, at this point, I'm going to turn it around and start working my way back because it's gone pretty far down the shoreline. And I actually have another piece of shoreline um, that I'm interested in that I want to take a look at. And I did spend a little bit of time with the camera just trying to get the heights right and all of that. So um, the camera comes with two batteries, and you get about 28 minutes each. So I spent most of the first battery um, just, you know, getting familiar with the camera and really trying to uh, get the right height to see what I wanted to see. So I've got that one flyover, but we're going to have a, a better one. Hey, what I've done here is I've hit a button that says uh, return to home, come back, and that's what it's going to do. All right, moving on to a second stretch of beach that I'm interested in. All right, let's try a new spot. Huh. <laughs> That's a spook. That is a spook. That is a nine-inch musky mania dock. That is a good find. Is this another one? No, can't be two. That is a good find. Very interesting. Well, if you gotta find a plug, yeah, this is the one to find. If you gotta find one, holy smokes. I mean, come on, think, you know, give you an idea how much I like the spooks. Now, I've got my bag with me here, what do I have? It's half spooks and half pencils.
uh, seems like a good time to mix in a little bit of fishing. So why am I so excited about finding a spook plug? Well, yeah, let's uh, do a little spook fishing here. And this is recent fishing. This is not where I shot the drone video exactly. It's not that far away from it either, and it is certainly... Uh, the exact same kind of terrain. Um, so yeah, the idea with the spooks, and this is a dark matter astro spook bunker color. Looks nothing like a bunker. Fish seem to like it. Um, it's got really stupidly good casting distance for a spook because they can be a challenge to cast. You'll see the sweeps on the rod to make that zigzag action. At the end of each sweep, you want to stop, g give it a little slack, and it will just zigzag along. That's a rock right there too. You know, not a fan of this water texture with the spook. Oh. <sighs> this is a good fish. Upper slot at least. Brand new line on here. And I just spooled up the 6,000 salt X. There's nothing wrong with that. Mid slot, huh? A little bigger out in the wind. Well, yeah, waters are still warm. Uh, I'm happy to catch any stripers at this point, so this is a good one. Oh, perfect. That's what you get with the crush barbs. Easy release. Right. Well, I guess uh, give this another cast. Huh? One more cast with this way to the left this time. Yeah, that's a good piece of water. This is a slow retrieve. It's like one or two cranks in between sweeps just to pick up the line. That's a really good spot right there. Come on. And that plug is right on the surface. I can see it from where I'm fishing. better than the last one. Shake off that would be okay. uh, upper slot. Yeah, this is New York and the slot is twenty eight to thirty five inches, so it's on the upper end of that range. There you go. Shake you off. All right, just those two fish that trip, but that's actually a pretty good trip right now. Uh, hey, down to the bottom right, right in the corner. Yeah, that looks like it's got some blackfish potential there. And um, we'll see a couple of rocks like that. Another one to the right. Yeah, I'm actually, that's right, I'm going to stop and look at this one. Um, and yeah, the drone's very responsive this way. You know, I, I could see that as I was coming up and I kind of hit the brakes to give that a second look thinking about blackfish anyway all right so let's keep moving along yeah another one um 
and they look like they're in a reasonable casting distance with a jig, so that, it's got some blackfish potential. But let's keep going along here uh, with stripers in mind. And yeah, so nothing jumping out at me here. Again, there's just so much stuff. Um, pretty consistent depth, it looks like. I'm not seeing a lot of uh, larger rocks. Well, here we've got a few. They're a little tight, but not too bad. The outer one's out far enough to be in play for some stripers. Got a man-made jetty here. In this kind of, of a setting, this is Long Island Sound, I have, you know, it's meaningless to me. That's there for erosion control. Many years ago that was put there. It really has no impact uh, on the outside um, you know, underneath the water, so it's it's meaningless. But out of the two spots, we're coming up on the spot that uh, this will be where I try. Um, this is what got my attention. Okay, look at you got clean beach to the left there, and then you've got it's almost like and it's natural. It's almost like a little bit of a reef. It sticks out there. There's a bunch of rocks. You can bet those rocks continue out in front of it. This is exactly the kind of thing I look for. This is a good look at it. And especially as we get to this end, we're going to see a transition here. Look at that. That's very reefish, the way it sticks out. But on this side, boom, it looks like it, it drops off. It's a sandier bottom. Any kind of an edge like that, you're going from sand to rocks, that little point sticks out. Out of everything I've seen here, that's the one where if somebody said, okay, pick a spot to, to start first. That's where I'm going. All right, so you'll notice the video is pretty smooth. Um, two reasons there. One is the camera gimbal is stabilized. Also, uh, there's image st stabilization on the video itself. So, and again, I you know this is not a specialty for me. Um, you know, I'm still at a kind of a learning point with these things. But, oh, here comes that point again. I like this. Look at that. Look at that, the way it drops off on the left there to that clean sandy bottom, but all that stuff sticks out. This is even a nicer angle than before. Um, so yeah, yeah, that looks, uh, yep, I'm, I'm going to be testing that out for sure. That looks good. But yeah, portability, ease of use, um, and, and this thing is quite reasonably priced. I'm not going to quote a price because these things change so much, but if you look it up, it's, it's you know, very reasonable. And I'll have a link to it in the video description. And although I didn't use it on this video, it does have a follow me mode where if you were walking along or riding in a boat or whatever, the drone will follow you. So something I was interested in is how stable could I use it to just plant it behind me in a situation like this? And okay, yeah, it's the, it, it works perfectly. I mean, it's like it's on a tripod. But the cool thing here, you see those black patches right in front of me? You think those are rocks, right? But they're moving. Those are schools of peanut bunker. And if you keep your eye on them in relation to where I'm standing, you'll see those are moving around. And uh, yeah, you know, had I been riding over, flying over the water here, they would have shown up real well. But uh, kind of an interesting thing looking forward to the fall fishing is to see this much peanut bunker in there. Um, I've got another school just to my right that's working its way in closer to the beach, and you'll get a uh, a much clearer view of that but yeah as I stepped up to the beach I actually thought that was um, just uh, rocks but no that's all bait so that's a really great sign hey, and hey look at the camera man that is rock solid it's and there's a breeze coming in that camera is perfectly stable just at hover not doing anything and uh, recording the video so holy smokes what's this uh, yeah this is Maine uh, I just got back from a trip um, up into Maine, and uh, it was with Old Town Kayak, and this will be an upcoming video. I've got a tour of the Old Town Kayak factory, and oh my God, it was so interesting. So yeah, that, that video will post in another few days, but um, I just wanted to show you the scenery uh, I was able to get with the drone. And, and again, you know, I'm in my learning phases here, so any jumpiness is, you know, my control of it, but uh, yeah, sent that thing out. Have a look around, and uh, just absolutely um, a beautiful place. And of course, we did some fishing up there out of the Old Town kayaks. And uh, yeah, the technique was something that yeah, you know, we I don't do on Long Island, that's for sure, or even in Florida. So yeah, maybe I'll try something different back here that I learned up there. Um, but yeah, it was a, a great trip and just such gorgeous scenery. So all right, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber please subscribe and hit that notification bell. 
and check out my online courses at saltstrong.com Skinner.